Hello and welcome to my second Android app review featuring the app DX Top. I decided to do a brief video tutorial on this app because I just simply think that it's better to actually see what this app does and looks like rather than just trying to explain it to you in a textual format. Uh, in order to do that I'm using two different uh, methods here. One is I have my Motorola Backflip from AT&T which is running on Android 1.5. Uh, there is a 2.1 update going to come out soon, hopefully, uh, at least sometime in, in this next quarter. And I basically have a webcam fixated on it. Um, it's not the best view though, it's going to be a little blurry and a little hard to see what's actually on the screen. So I've also opened up the uh, Dalvik debug monitor uh, which comes with a screen capture utility uh, with my phone connected over USB. So when I go to different screens and I want you to see clearer what's going on, I can just refresh the screen capture here on my computer screen and that way you'll get a much better look at it. So basically uh, DX Top, what it is is an alternative home app, home screen app. Uh, traditionally with the Android platform you get a interface that has four different home screens on it. Uh, if you didn't know already Android is based on Linux and one of the key features in Linux is to have multiple virtual desktops that you can switch between and that's basically what the home screens are. Uh, here I'm in a center screen. One thing that the DX top does, it does allow you to enable a fifth screen in the center uh, and basically the rest it's all organized in a star pattern. So I can move over to the left and view another second screen, over to the right for another one, up there's yet another screen and then at the bottom you have yet one more screen. So you'll notice here at the bottom that there's the little star pattern there and it highlights the screen that you're on. One difference you'll notice right away with DX Top is at the bottom normally on Android you'll see one tab down here and when you click that tab it opens up basically a grid array of all your app icons and you can get that here using the left tab however you'll quickly notice that there are no app icons here and that's because I've organized all my apps into separate categories which to me is just a more uh, intuitive way of locating my apps quicker rather than having to scroll down through a whole bunch of icons and visually trying to locate it I can simply go into the category such as communications and if I update the screen capture here you'll see there's all my apps that have to do with communications. I can close that tab and another example would be a category I created called AT&T apps. Uh, AT&T puts these apps on there by default and there's no easy way to remove them so I basically just put them all together in one category so that they're out of my way until should I ever have to access them for whatever reason now you'll notice that there's also a right tab and when you click that one you'll see that there is now a grid array of app icons but you'll notice that the key difference besides the fact that they're not categorized is that the names to the apps are color coded white means it's an app that I ran recently I can just tap it and it'll reopen yellow means that there's some kind of service required and red means that it's running in memory so the real advantage to that is if I long press on one that is running in memory I am presented with a list of options application info will basically take me to the information screen for that app telling me everything that the app is accessing which is something you don't get on the iPhone you know exactly what information and what areas of your phone that the app is utilizing locate on market takes me to the market app where I can see the status of the app or I can install any update available or I can uninstall it. But the last one is kill process. So if I have several apps running in memory I can use this to kill the process and remove it from memory freeing it up for other things. Now the other thing you'll notice 
um, this entire bar down here, you have these left and right arrow indicators on the sides. And all that means is that this entire bar is actually scrollable. So if I put my finger here and scroll it to the right, I get an alternative uh, bar. And when you first do this, it's basically a blank bar. You can long press with your finger on there and then choose apps that you want to have quick access to. So typically these are going to be the apps you use the most. So this way you can quickly access them without having to navigate through your home screens um, and get to them that way. And if you scroll over again, there is yet another part of the bar there. And this one, if you hit the middle, you are again presented with your app list and categories. But you also get these left and right shortcuts. The left one, I have it set to open up my phone dialer so I can get to that quickly. And then my right shortcut opens up the text messaging interface. In the settings, you can actually choose what those left and right shortcuts do. And you'll notice here, if I push the menu button, you'll see the traditional buttons you normally see in the normal uh, Android interface, including the settings area where I can go in and make different settings to my phone. But now there is a new icon that says DX Top. And if you hit that, you'll see that there are a lot of options there for the app standard options and advanced options. And if you go into the standard options, the first one is look and feel. And you'll see there that there are several options such as screen transitions. So that when you go from left, right, up, or down on your home screens, you can have animated transitions from one to the other. You can also turn on or off the center fifth screen and just go with four screens if you want or utilize all five. The lock screen option gives you a left to right scroll unlock method that replaces the pattern method normally found in Android. So if you like that feature from the iPhone interface you can enable it here. You can also enable or disable the sound for that effect and other options as well. Going down, you have dial bar options. This is where you can change the left and right uh, shortcuts. So you can see those up there. Uh, desktop updates. That is yet another option where you can tell it to check for updates to the program automatically or you can check manually for updates now. I prefer to leave that the automatic feature disabled because I'd rather I periodically go into my market app and see what updates there are for any of my apps and just do them that way. Going down into the advanced options you'll notice that there is another look and feel set of options and one that you might find useful in there is the screen rotate option. Um, you can actually tell it to stick with your phone settings which uh, is basically just it enables or disables the automatic rotate depending on how you're holding your phone using the accelerometer. Or you can tell DX Top to always use portrait or always use landscape. So this way not only can you disable the automatic rotate but you can actually tell it your preference and format, portrait or landscape, that you'd like to have at all times. So there are other options there. Um, don't want to take the time going through all of them, but you basically get the idea. It's highly customizable compared to the original uh, home screen uh, app that comes with the Android platform.